I am here because we have a meeting that has brought together the Fraternity of Teach and the Fraternity of Aheri. I chair the board of Aheri and uh, our engagement as Aheri has been uh, to articulate the connection between what researchers are doing, the academic world and the communities and the people. So part of our celebration is to appreciate the fact that uh, academic achievers, those who have impacted society and communities are all over and it is important for us to take note of what their contributions are as well as appreciate them. So part of the events that we shall undertake here is to recognize uh, Professor Bethwell Alan Ogot as an eminent scholar who has contributed Im immensely and a lot of information in history, which was his primary area of specialization, but also touching on community and development and the way uh, academicians can meet the expectations of their communities by engaging the communities in discussing their destiny, in discussing their achievements, and also focusing on how innovations and the new emerging science can uh, bring to fore uh, the emancipation of the community people economically and socially. I don't think uh, there can be a, a half-baked uh, program. I think uh, education, especially at the university world over, has so many levels of achievement. That's why when you are graduating, some will achieve first-class honors, Others will get upper second, others will get lower second, others will get pass, and perhaps others will even fail, and they are called upon to receipt for the exams. Uh, we have to trust our education institutions. We think that they are doing the right thing. Of course, as uh, human beings, we always must engage in improvement. So we must uh, not rest because we are in the university. We must wake up and uh, address the concerns that communities and societies have regarding, for example, the interface between the academic achievements that we instill in students in classes and laboratories and libraries and what is happening out there in the world of work. Those people who will be employing the students when they graduate. And uh, this is a conversation that is ongoing. It has always been there. But uh, I think sometimes because of the way people get frustrated by the outputs from the universities. We tend to throw around some words. Oh, we have half-baked graduates. Our universities are not doing the best. I think we're trying to do the best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As uh, Professor Nyagoti Church has uh, mentioned, uh, he, I think today he would be one uh, of the coming from the, the really the first generation of uh, professors in this region, not only in Kenya but in the East African region as a whole. Uh, and so I don't see that there would be many people competing with him uh, for that particular uh, the, the kind of uh, length of, of engagement that he has had in this area of history. So I, I think that uh, he indeed deserves to be the one to be recognized today. This is the focus of my presentation was that the causation or the factors that influence occurrence of ill health and occurrence of outbreaks are multifaceted. Uh, so today we do have climate change. So uh, if you are in Nairobi, if you are uh, listening carefully, there's a lot of mosquitoes now in Nairobi, which was the, not the case before. Uh, this is related to climate change. So there is climate change, there is persistent poverty, and, uh, you know, Africa has not quite healed from the history of colonialism. And there is neocolonialism that tends to impact on the rate of economic development. And as long as economic de development remains inadequate, yeah, we will be exposed to hazards, we will be exposed to, uh, to these uh, global outbreaks. It is a bit of both, uh, I, and uh, I... I think this would be one of the areas that Harry and Teach together might be very much interested to, and that is to be able to tap on the innovations 
of the young people of our countries, beginning at the local levels, then the national levels, before we come to the, to the African Union level. I think it is a, it's a responsibility that might be shared at various levels. One of the elements uh, uh, that uh, we may need to reflect on is the capacity, the carrying capacity of our countries, of our structures. Uh, the, because of what we talked about earlier, the economic level of development, uh, we are not able to absorb all these talents here. And, and so uh, we find that the... Uh, there is drain, but I, I think there is also the other aspect of diaspora, where we are trying to also uh, emphasize that those that are in the diaspora should think of home, and so that we can actually continue to in interact. Because we, if we say that they cannot, if they can't find a jobs here, and they can find jobs elsewhere, we can't stop them. Because when they go and get those jobs elsewhere, they are still remitting resources, re remitting funds back home, but I think they can also remit ideas. I think Countries such as India and others and China have, uh, have benefited a lot by those who uh, go overseas to work there. They get ideas there and so forth. They, de they develop, but then come back home. So I think what we must emphasize is what are the mechanisms for them to be able to, to engage and continue to interact with home and be able to eventually perhaps bring back some of the expertise that they have developed elsewhere back back here, together with technologies. We better start by defining uh, the spectrum, internet spectrum, as a resource. And as a resource uh, means we can use it for good and we can use it for bad. And we can also misuse it and waste it. And uh, that will be the starting point of engaging with uh, the community or the, the public, uh, not to introduce internet just as a product, but as a tool or a catalytic uh, enabler for development. We have worked with the community and there are great uh, myths and misunderstanding of digitalization. Uh, one of them, as you have uh, rightly stated, is that it is negative to the morals. Uh, and of course, with this misunderstanding, people see only the negative part. So uh, I would advocate for more uh, public engagement or civic education as to the opportunities that exist on uh, digitalization process. Uh, of course, a large part of the community are not connected. We have uh, about only 21% uh, who are connected online. And this is uh, principally on their individual context and effort. So uh, I'm glad that the government has uh, come in and focused on digitalization as a, a catalytic uh, uh, enabler for development. It is also on our part uh, as the citizenry, uh, not only to uh, uh, either throw the bath uh, water with the baby, but be careful also to see uh, the good part uh, of it. Definitely, uh, as I stated, that uh, internet is a resource, and if you don't have guidelines uh, which you uh, allude to as policies, then either it is mismanaged or it is uh, suboptimal in its effect and impact. Uh, the process of policy formulation, particularly on uh, te technical areas, is very complex, but indeed there is need for that conversation to be ongoing. Uh, connectivity is also very contextualized uh, because of the various gaps that exist, either be it on uh, economic exclusions, be it on... Uh, uh, gender exclusion or academic exclusion. And so we need to start with each community from where they are and uh, have a bottom-up approach towards policy formulation in, in involving the community. Uh, and a good example is uh, we talk about uh, connecting everybody. Yet those who have money, when they go for holiday, they seek for a place where there's no connectivity. Are we trying to impose uh, connectivity to people who don't want it? That's one. And two, are we then uh, trying to exclude other people? We have uh, now the government is embracing e-government, e e whereby most of the functions, uh, as the president has uh, alluded to, should be available online. But how many people can access that, uh, those services? How many people are, uh, have critical digital literacy? 
Uh, and, and so even as we discuss policy and we want to engage, uh, Waziri talked about public participation. Is it fair to engage the public on something they understand le- less of? Uh, and that's why I'm saying we need to do a lot of community engagement, even towards policy formulation. And we are seeing the cost of gadgets rocketing. I don't know if that has an, uh, an implementation, a negative one, on the growth of the digital space that you're talking about. Uh, the digital value chain is very broad and deep and cannot be solved by the government and cannot be solved by the telcos or the industry. It is something that uh, each part of the society can feed into. You talked of TikTok. That is uh, uh, content creation. And uh, we have seen in our intervention uh, those youth that are empowered in the community, in the rural community specifically, uh, stand less to uh, come or to migrate to the urban areas. And this has a ripple effect on uh, uh, saving on the infrastructure uh, in the central or in the, in the urban areas. So, uh, indeed, uh, bringing in more to the community is beneficial uh, to us in the long term. And also to involve, uh, we can see today, we have many uh, organizations coming in uh, that work with the community from the government. And this is part of the process of understanding and developing our own solutions.